See that? That's uh, rock chuck poop. Remember that rock chuck we had uh, stuck in the excavator? Got a rock chuck in the excavator. He's hiding. He's going to come out and attack us. You see him? Yeah. Where is he? He's in there. Well, we found him this morning. There's what's left of him. Uh, the rest of him's in the fan. <laughs> Matt got uh, sprayed in greasy guy me gopher guts. <laughs> oh God, how we good. Who's cleaning this up? Holy jeez. Yuck. Oh man. Let's see what we got in here. Is he still in there? Well, no. On the ground, eh? Yeah. Or most of you? I don't know. You think he'll run again without chewing some more up? Oh my gosh, what a mess. Greasy grimy gopher guts. <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta turn this fan around. It's gonna show you how these cat fans work. Okay, what you gotta do, push this plate in, rotate it, like that, and turn the fan around. Do it again. Okay, ready to rock and roll. You starting the back motor again? shifty problem with the whore and this is the upshift solenoid that's the downshift solenoid and that's the lube solenoid so if you get out of sync have a problem the juice gets cut off to the lube solenoid so it can't overspeed the rear engine or cause damage so what happened was 
in an upshift and then when it went down to downshift out of like fifth gear which would be let's see one two third gear back here anyway this thing was this magnet was all loose on here and so I took it home cleaned it up tightened it and put some dielectric grease in there put it back on and see if she goes okay <clears throat> the solenoid fix didn't work so now we're gonna replace them with new ones sons of buck Okay, <clears throat> here we go to first. Light out. Second. Third. Fourth. All the lights out. Okay, I'm coming back. Reverse. Well, we're working. It must have been that solenoid. Okay, this is the <coughs> this is a synchronizing switch. This sends the signal to the rear engine to shift. And okay, this is the manual linkage that selects the gear up in the operator's compartment. And then this is the automatic controls here. And by turning this with the pliers. I can make that rear engine shift and what we did up there is we we hooked the oil pressure switch wires together uh, it won't send power to the back motor till the front engine has power so to test this you get a power <clears throat> rotate this watch the sink light make sure the back engine shifts and it did Okay, we got our problem solved. So those two solenoids are brand new. They were 200 and some bucks a piece for the solenoids. I ordered <clears throat> the switch group, the slave switch, which is under that box. It's uh, three switch, switch switches together. It's the upshift switch, down switch, shift switch and the synchronization switch I ordered that one new that was 400 bucks so I have a spare one of those and I also ordered the new wiring harness <coughs> that goes through the bowl and that's this section right here and uh, it's in pretty bad shape so I'm going to replace that just to make sure we replaced the wiring harness on the rear engine, the harness that goes up over the hitch, the main harness, uh, the main harness under the dash, and then that comes back to that uh, um, synchronization switch on the main transmission. So all I've got left to replace is the main harness through the bowl, and it goes up through the side of the bowl on the right side comes out right up there and goes up under that hydraulic hose and then around on the neck and then up there you'll see another cannon plug <laughs> what's it like to have all the money that's just uh, going around around there uh, we got a job <coughs> we can't get the fuel truck into, and I'll show you why. This is uh, why I had to work that one day when I was sick. This road was nothing but dirt and just muck, and so I had to get some gravel on it before this pivot up here, which is a corner catcher machine, got 
uh, here to the road. See, I'm going to work this morning. It's Saturday morning. And uh, I had a terrible time just getting the gravel in here. You can see what a mess this is. But anyway, it's at least possible now. We still can't get the fuel truck in here. So this is why I'm using the tank in the back of my pickup. <coughs> so I'm having to haul fuel in in the back of the pickup. And uh, this is a 300 gallon stainless steel tank we built. I got a smaller one that's 230 gallon, a little shorter. I don't like this, but I gotta do it. I got no other way to get fuel in. But I gotta get past this pivot, and then this end tower, this corner arm is gonna cross the road. And uh, it's gonna block us in here for I don't know how many hours while it goes around. I'm hoping when we get ready to leave, we might have to drive under it. See, I gotta snake through these two drop tube somehow without scratching the crap oh goody it's moving son of a bitch now what it's like a freaking car wash god dang it I just I got a new painted pickup here I don't need this oh Jesus uh. okay we made her there we go so anyway, the pivot's going to cross right here, right, right here, and it's going to go out into that field right there and swing around, and as slow as it's going, there's no way it's going to be back across the road when we get done. We're only going to work half a day today. I still don't feel good. Matt's running the filthy whore. And I'm just running a push cat and we're uh, building up the dike off to the west end now this time. This pivot never shuts off because this grain on the left side of the road as you can see is in the head right now so they have to keep the water to it pretty much 24-7. Harvest will come early again here this year. It'll probably be the end of July or first week of August things are way ahead of schedule or as they say across the pond schedule we are ahead of schedule but not with a plugged up nose and a Donald Duck voice tune in next time when I run the horror off the fill Before I go, I need to have some peace of mind.